So far, we've been talking a lot about numbers. And we've learned that when we put numbers together, they can form variables. But it's also important that we know how to organize our variables. We organize variables in something called a data set. And that's what we're going to explore right now. A data set is all of the data collected for a particular study. And we're going to use a very specific technique in the way that we organize our numbers in a data set. We're going to place all of the data from each student, from our previous experiment, into a spreadsheet. And we will always use this same technique. Students' information will go into rows, and the variables will go into columns. If we were looking at a data set, we could look across the row to find, for instance, your information, or we could look down a column to find everyone's information about their height, weight, all the rest of the scores, all the rest of the variables that we have collected. So the scores for the people all go in rows for each individual, and the variables will be located in the columns. Along the way, I'm going to give you multiple data sets to use in this class. One of the first ones that I'm going to introduce to you is called the dog toys data set. This is a data set that I made up, and I'm going to explain all the details about it later on. But for now, I want to use just a subsection, a small piece of this data set to help explain the things that will be common to all of the data sets that we will be using. Let's take a look. This is your data set. Collectively, all of this information is the data set. This is a subset, a small portion. There will be much more to the data set than what you see here. But when you look at this collection of rows and columns and words and numbers, that is the data set. In the first column, we see dog followed by specific numbers. Those are random identifiers for each dog. They keep each dog anonymous so that we can protect their privacy. Each of those numbers represents an element. If these were people in this data set, they would be the participants, each participant having information only about that one person in a given row. The variables will be placed in columns. You can remember the difference between rows and columns by thinking of, for instance, Greek columns in the Parthenon. They go up and down. Columns go up and down. Rows move across. All of the observations for each participant or element in the data set will be contained in rows. When we see the confluence of both a row and a column, that would be a data point. So, for instance, the number of toys owned by dog 121 is 4. 118 has a favorite toy of the rope bone, and 114 is a small sized dog. Now, let's apply what we already know about levels of measurement. Look at this data set and tell me if you can spot a nominal level variable. It would be favorite toy. It's identifying a difference, which is your favorite toy, but there's no underlying order to chirpy bird versus stuffed monkey versus chew toy. How about an ordinal variable? The ordinal variable would be dog size. We have dogs that are small, medium, and large. There is a difference, there is an order, but there is no quantity. We know that small is smaller than medium, and medium is smaller than large, but we don't know by how much. Now, which of these variables would be a scale level, interval, or ratio level variable? That would be the number of toys owned. It is answering a question of how many toys do you have? And finally, is this cross-sectional data or time series data? Because it was collected all at one time, it's not a before and after type of study. This would be cross-sectional data. Now that we have a data set, the fun can really begin. Because we can put our data 
into statistical software and begin to analyze it. And that is going to be the topic for our next video.